Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. Good morning, Wendy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? <laughs> um, I'm just sitting down, getting ready for our lesson. Yeah, yeah, at the, uh, a lesson with you actually <laughs> for right, right now. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, can you say that one more time? Is it okay now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. No, so I just want to know if you're ready yeah. so we can start. Uh, yeah, I'm okay, but I cannot uh, use the video, I can use the audio. Oh, okay. No, that's, that's, oh, that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry about that. Yeah, so we're, yeah, we're going to have like a free talk actually about just, um, l about learning a foreign language. I know that this is like really, uh, interesting to you. This is like an interesting topic. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, so we can just start with just, um, just talking about, uh, I'll ask you like a few questions and then you can probably just start answering the questions with uh, your opinions. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess like the first one is just a simple question like what is your mother language? Of course Chinese. <laughs> yeah, so Chinese. Um, and so would you say that um, it was only Chinese in your in your household that you were speaking when you were younger? Like, were you, were your parents speaking other languages as well? No, it's a, it's a local language. Okay, just yeah, local. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So, and how many languages do you speak? I want to learn uh, Chinese, I can play Chinese. Okay, so, so you yeah. speak, so how many languages do you speak? So you speak how many? So how many? Like how many? Num like two, three? Uh, uh, three Chinese, English, and Japanese. Oh, Chinese, English, and Japanese. Okay. So how did you learn your those two other languages? How did you learn um, Japanese? How did you learn English? To be honest, uh, uh, I learned uh, two languages because of uh, requirement. You know, mm -hmm. in China, mm -hmm. it's a compulsory language. Compulsory. So if you want to have the best school, if you want to have better education, mm -hmm. so you must know that it's a certain goal of, of English. Okay. And for example, it's both I and I was studying a foreign language school, so we have to learn a second foreign language. Mm -hmm. The second foreign language school, as you can place, is much more closely related to, to Chinese, so a uh, choosing. And, uh, I learned it in school and then uh, I learned by myself at home and I listened to a lot of page and uh, watched some cartoons. Uh, cartoons? And I have been learning, yeah, 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 cartoons of Japanese. Because you're going to, to, to learn some words mm -hmm. and uh, the intonation, yeah, intonation of different. Uh, with, um, uh, the grammar is also different. In, in chi you know, in China, mm -hmm. Chinese, they say, you would say I go to school every day, right? I so the subject is in front of the critics, right? Mm -hmm. But in Japanese, it's uh, it's different. It's, it's converse, right? Yeah. Word, word, Can we say words? Can you uh can you type it? You said words or verbs. Verbs. So, you know. Oh, verbs. verbs. V e r b s. Yeah. Verbs. No, 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 no. I mean the. The position of predict and subject uh, are different. So that means uh, that in exact different places. So how can I say that? The exact different places? But, uh, words, words are right. <laughs> I'm not sure. Just uh, uh, different. <laughs> uh -huh. So you, are you saying like the, the construction of the sentences are different in Chinese and Japanese? So it's like the word order, right? So the order of the words are different. Yeah, the word, the, yeah, the order of the words are different, right? Mhm. Mm yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, 
because I did also um, learn Japanese as well, and the how I learned is really um, I, I think like how people learn language is very different for each person, but like there are like these basic um, things that are necessary to learn any language, right? And it's it's to be able to pronounce the words properly, pronounce it like a native, right? Because you don't you don't want to pronounce it incorrectly, and then nobody can understand you, right? And then there's also comprehension, meaning that you're supposed to also be able to understand what someone is saying to you. Um, if you don't understand, then you're probably going to answer incorrectly. You're probably going to um, incorrectly interpret what they're saying. And then because of that, then you won't be able to um, speak the language because if you can't even understand people, you can't speak to someone, right? Because that's the whole point of speaking is to talk with someone else, right? Um, so I think like how to learn those different skills is really different for everybody, right? So you said you watch cartoons, right? So what skill were you trying to learn through watching cartoons? Like how did you, how did you practice pronunciation? How did you practice vocabulary? How did you practice comprehension? Those are the type of questions and things that you know, I'm I'm asking from you. Uh, the reason why I was talking is that I think it's a, a good way to improve my pronunciation and discipline, mm-hmm. and I can imitate you yeah, yeah, uh, of the lyrics, mm-hmm. the lyrics of the cartoon, and uh, I also learned some uh, German songs. Mm-hmm. Actually, I oh, because I still have to use it. Because at the very beginning, I was just uh, learn because I want to get a higher, higher mark. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, uh, when I was preparing for the, my, to, to get my master's degree, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I should talk, I should talk with the music staff to get some successful. So I learned very hard, but because there is, in my, in my daily life, mm, I really like, uh, there is, I uh, like a uh, language environment of Japanese. Mm-hmm. I have no chance to use it. And there is no need for me to use it. So I actually have forgotten most of it. I have forgotten most of it. Yeah. For English, because I am a teacher at, at, at first, and now my job is also closely related to, to English. Mm-hmm. So I must, I must try to create a language environment for myself. So yeah. So what I'm doing. That why I'm talking with you now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, in the morning actually, after I'm driving now, but it's, it's a safe environment. Oh, you're driving right now? It's okay, no problem. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a uh, uh, yeah, I am going to speak for in a, like a, a contest. Not, not, not I take, but I just, I, I walk as a judge. Okay. Okay, you're, you're, yeah. you're going to judge. You're going to be a, a part of the panel. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree that, you know, um, even after you learn something, you have to keep practicing, right? So you can remember it and keep improving. Um, so th- I think, like, that's also another part of learning a language, right? Practice. Um, a lot of people forget about practicing <laughs> that, you know, it's it's hard to... Like, even for me as well, when I was learning Japanese, um, I really learned it because I wanted to go to Japan. I really wanted to... I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to Japan and be um, a foreigner, right? I wanted to go to Japan and be like the Japanese people, right? Speak like them, talk like them, so that they feel comfortable um, when they're talking to me. Um, so that was the main reason. And once I once I went to Japan, um, I think um, I I was more interested in learning the language even more because um, it was it was. I really loved the culture there. I loved the food. I loved the people. Um, I loved um, I just like everything when I went there. And because of that, it made me want to keep learning more and more and more. Um, but then, you know, after I left Japan, um, it was really hard to continue uh, l- practicing J- Japanese because, you know, I didn't have Japanese people to, to practice with. Um, then I started working. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of like had the same situation like you, right? Like you, you didn't really have a need to use it um, in your daily life, right? Just for, just like for me, my job doesn't deal with Japanese, so I didn't I didn't need to use it either. 
Um, so yeah, I think that that's another important thing about learning a second language. It's like not just learning the grammar and the um, and all the rules to the language, but also practice. Um, and I think you're, you're doing a good job by trying to um, practice like as much as you can English as much as you can, right? So I think that's a it's a good thing um, to do. Um, yeah, but the, the situation is very you know that that side mm -hmm. in China is that you go to foreign and the people just uh, okay most kids just begin to learn for a young age mm -hmm. family is well apparently uh, they have a lot of uh, online courses mm -hmm. and that's okay but if the if the parents family allow that well see they just uh, learn to do that. Yeah. So the teachers pay attention to the, the words, the grammar, the structures, and uh, students don't have too much time to practice. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a, that's an important part that like it's is missing right in education, the practice part, right? And like and, and you're right, you know, a lot of people can't afford to do those um, online courses where that they, they can pay they can pay to practice. So it's it's really hard. It's really hard um, to figure that out. Um, uh, actually, the earlier you begin to learn a foreign language, the mm -hmm. best option was to have a teacher. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my, my, uh, let me tell me one more time. Yeah, my niece, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just began to learn English at the, when, he, when she was, uh, when she was only. So thing, uh, what my son began to learn when I maybe when I was pregnant, <laughs> because in my in my in my yeah, how to say in my stomach, right? Uh huh. When I was pregnant, so I say, mm -hmm. I can say this one. When I was pregnant, so I say my son is in my stomach. So. No, you can say you can say um, he was in your womb. W O M B womb. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, womb. Womb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Maybe she, she feels that my, 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 my son has my better pronunciation than my speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so what, what do you what do you think? What's the best way to learn a foreign language? What do you think? I think that if you really want to have very good uh, learning you can learn the very you must uh, have to learn mm. mm -hmm. first to learn that is let, let me give you one more example if you if you really want to learn how to swim right yeah you go down the water there's a swimming pool yeah and the coach and nobody will so you be in the environment you want the the coach give you some to get it mm -hmm. you must try your, try your best swim to the other other, other, other side, side. uh-huh, yeah. Other side. So, I think if you really, uh, if you want to speak as well as a next speaker, if you want to get the authentic, you know, you must go through the point and bring something to the Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, oh, go, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And she had, she had been there for next to our year. And that day, she sent me a video clip. That she sent me a video clip, and I found that, oh, oh, wow, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's pronounced it's, it's really awesome now, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's exactly. I I agree with that one hundred percent. You know, that that is the best way to learn. It's not just to like speak with the with um. I think like speaking with uh, the, you know, a native speaker is is a good step, but also just like living in their um, in their environment, you know, um, because then you start to learn learn not just the language but you learn the culture and why, um, like you just learn the environment where the the language is spoken. It it makes you become it makes you. Um, it makes you become kind of like underst understanding of the language and um, the 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 environment behind the language, and then 
just learn, learning about the environment, you can kind of like understand the language even more, you know. Um, just like I think like you were talking about, you know, London. Um, just like, just like, um, you, um, UK or UK English is like different from American English, and like when you when you live in London or like you um, just visit maybe for like a few weeks, you can kind of see the differences in the language and why those differences are there um and then you know like then you kind of understand oh this is why they pronounce th these letters like this and americans pronounce it like this you know like you kind of understand more um but if you just if you just are taught in a classroom you know you don't you don't get that understanding of the culture of the environment of the language right because if you if you're in a classroom Hey. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh did so did you hear anything I said? Yeah, it's a uh, language. Yeah, uh, I think I think some of it got cut off, but um, I was just saying that it's better to visit a country and um, interact with the um, the native speakers rather than just sit in a classroom. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. I, I, so I say I totally agree with you. I mean, I agree with you one hundred percent, right? Yeah. I totally agree with you. I mean, I agree with you. What? Uh, yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. That's what it means. Should I add a? Uh, should I add another position that is a four or just a one? Is okay. One hundred percent is f fine. That that means I totally agree. That means I fully agree with you. When you say one hundred percent, I agree okay, with you one hundred percent. That's fine. I fully agree with you. Yeah, yeah. But we we I totally like agree. I totally agree with you. I agree with you 100%. Those are the, like the the two most used um phrases that we use um when we agree with someone. But um um yeah. Yeah. I think uh Uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, I'm designing a paper now, right? So mm -hmm. So in, in my textbook, in our textbook, we just say, how are you, right? So you answer, you answer, your answer is fine, I'm, I'm fine, and you, and uh, I'm good, I'm okay, right? Yeah. But I know in, in your place, you, you still don't say, how are you, right? Um, you see, and it and it depends on who you're speaking to. We, uh, I I wouldn't say we we say it all the time. We sometimes we say how's it how is it going? Um, how are you? We we really use it if if it's um maybe someone we're not very close to. Maybe if if it's maybe uh maybe the mailman. You know, you say, oh hi, how are you? Or like, good morning, how how are you? You know, um, but I, w I would say that's that's when we use how are you. So we use it. We we do use it, but um, we use it um, for certain um, for certain interactions, for certain relationships. You know, um, so yeah, yeah. So I, w I would say I would say we use it. We definitely do use it. Um, yeah. Not that frequently. So what are the most frequent ways you 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 greet others? Uh, let's see. So the and you want to know the phrases that we use when we first see see someone or what like what what, what type of no. phrase are you looking for? Uh, for example, uh, the most, uh, most frequently used expression. Uh huh. Most frequently used expression when you are seeing someone for the first time today or something. Acquaintances, right? So when we're acquaintances, yeah. yeah. So I guess like you're saying, like if you if you have a closer relationship to them, right? So if it's not, if it's maybe if it's like your coworker and not like a bus driver, right? Because a bus driver, you just say how are you, right? You don't 
because you don't really know who the bus driver is, right? But then you mean like for someone that you know more, like no close, you have a closer relationship to, right? Like maybe your friend or, yeah. Um, yeah, and and like for for that, like like I said, I would say how how is it going? How is it going today? Um, and we 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 say that one instead of how are you? Um, we can you can still say how are you to your friend, but like you can say how's it going? Um, just because maybe you want to know how how have they been recently, right? So like how was your weekend or how have you like um, how have you been? Right? How have you been? Just just means like. How have you been recently? How have you been yesterday? Um, just because you know you want to know what they've what they've been up to, right? Or like you can say, "What have you been up to?" Right? Um, so that they'll tell you, "Oh, you know, yesterday I went, I did this, or something like that." Um, so that's so it's so a few would be, "What have you been up to?" "How have you been?" Um, "How is it going?" Uh, Mm, let's see what else what else do we use um, um, and like uh, what's going on something like that but um yeah there's 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 many there's many other uh, expressions that we use um, when we when we're talking to someone that we're close to Yeah, I would say like how are you is more when you so so it is used, but I would say it's used more for like um, a relationship that isn't that it's not a close relationship, right? If you if you're if you have a closer relationship to the person, then there's many other expressions that you can use, right? Um, you can use other expressions like what have you been doing um, recently? Um, how was your weekend? Um, yeah, so like I would say, I would say it is used frequently, but it's depending on the relationship that um, of the person that you're talking to, right? So if it's a bus driver and you've never met the bus driver before, then you can't ask him, um, um, "What what did you do last week?" Right? Because he doesn't really know you. What? Why? Why should he tell you what uh, he was doing last week? Right? he he that would be weird right but you can you can say that to your friend because you guys have a stronger relationship right so i would say how are you is more so if you're just maybe meeting someone for the first time you don't really know that person that's when you say how are you so i would say like i i i, I still use how are you you know i use it like like how do you do yeah how are you is just like how how do you do right um because i use it too i use it um almost every day Yeah, how do you do? Yeah, we don't in America we don't really use how do you do. Maybe in in England, but not in, not in America. We don't use how do you do. You know in, in a textbook right we to say we learn how do you do. How do you mean that we are in a very formal place you someone? <laughs> yeah. Do do? Like to be honest with you, okay. if 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 someone said how how do you, how do you do to me, um I would think that they're very strange. Um because we, we don't really say that um in America. <laughs> Um, that's more that's more like um like British English as British English yeah and even and even in Britain you have to be yeah you have to be very formal to say how do you do <laughs> yeah exactly exactly how do you do? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So, and uh, another one that is, if you're going to in your place, how do you test the pupil listening comprehension and listening skills? How do you, yeah. Oh. Test, uh, yeah, and like um, for us, we have um. Like even like for for example for me when I was doing um, Japanese in college, um, we had uh, multiple like our teacher, our teacher was Japanese right, but she also had assistants, 
So she had two assistants. They were Japanese students as well. So what the Japanese students did was that they would take us, they would take each student one by one, and then they would sit down with the student, and then they would ask the student questions in Japanese, and then we had to answer the questions in Japanese. So the, the, the test was very difficult because it was, it was like, you had to, first of all, you had to understand the question that they were asking, and then secondly, you had to speak Japanese to them and speak it so that they, they understand what you're saying. So it was very difficult. It wasn't, it wasn't just a recording, right? We had to actually listen to the person when they were talking to us at, the, at that time. So um, it, was actual, it was an actual conversation with a um, Japanese person. Um, and when I was in, and when we were in, when I was in high, um, high school, when I was learning Spanish, um, our Spanish teacher, she would play a, a recording, um, a Spanish recording. Maybe she would record herself um, and then she would just like say some, a few things in Spanish. And then after the, after the recording, we had to answer a few questions on our test, um, based on the recording, right? So based on what she said in the recording, what, which answer is true, which answer is false, you know, choose the correct answer, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, stuff we, like that. We do uh, mostly exactly the same thing in China. Yeah. Because we have, we have a, just have to do a lot of multiple choice. Yeah. Multiple choice activities. So you listen to a dialogue, for example, oh, why, how are you? Well, mm -hmm. it's just the weekend. Yeah. So I went to the park and I took some apples. Mm -hmm. So the park says, where did the rain go? Or where did, what did the rain do? Mm -hmm. What did the rain do? That last, uh, last yeah. song that I, yeah. So you will get three or four choices. You choose the the yeah kind of and then I think also like some of the teachers like they 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 like that method but they think that it's not the best method of um, of testing the person the, the students ability because maybe a student can just guess which answers are wrong right and then they say yeah, okay yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the right but so, then so our so yeah so like what what our what they like to do sometimes is like instead of them um, choosing like um an answer we do like a short answer where the student has to write something right um, so instead of like saying choose the correct answer they have to write down the correct answer um, so there is no multiple choice there's like maybe um, they have to write a sentence or something like that about which what the right answer is um, so that's another way that they test um, students so that means you have very uh Lot of vocabulary and very good grammar. Yeah, yeah. If, if without without that, we cannot yeah, we cannot we cannot write the words. Exactly, like exactly. So yeah, there's there's many ways, many ways. Um, there's a long term, there's a long way to go. Yeah, there is, there is. But we're, we're, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job making these books and all that stuff for your students. I think um. I think it's good that you know there are teachers like you who are trying to um, make the lear the education system and like language learning better for students. You know, because I think it's really important. So keep it up. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, this oh, this topic. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. All right, Wendy. So I'll, I'm gonna let you get back to your driving, okay? And have a good time at the um, um, at the yeah. uh, event today. Yeah, yeah. You, you too. You too. Have a good day. All right. Bye.